Say, you know, have you ever thought about using subcontractors uh, in your cleaning company? You know, today with, uh, with uh, finding good employees, uh, a lot of companies are using subcontractors. So if you decide to use that model, there's a few things you want to think about. Um, you know, first of all, you want to make sure that they're a legal subcontractor. Um, what I'm seeing is a lot of companies are just uh, going out and soliciting people uh, and asking them if they're interested in, in cleaning. And, um, you know, essentially, uh, you know, classifying this person as a subcontractor, uh, but yet that person doesn't have a legal cleaning company, they don't have any equipment, uh, they may or may not have experience in cleaning, and, and uh, won't have any insurance, no bond, uh, and, and many other things. So, actually what they're doing is they're actually misclassifying an employee. That's what it ends up being. So, that's the first thing that you want to avoid. Uh, if you decide to use a subcontractor model. So what I would do is uh, I would actually create a list of all the cleaning companies in your area uh, and um, then uh, you know go ahead and uh, you know get the name, phone number, contact person you know and the thing to do is uh, you know talk to the owner if you can uh, because that's who the person you want to build a relationship with. So if we have a list of uh, current cleaning companies in our service area contact them you know let them know that hey you know you're looking for quality uh, subcontractors to fulfill uh, cleaning jobs you know it could be uh, cleaning an entire uh, facility or it could be just stripping and waxing floors or carpet cleaning or window washing or whatever it is um, but that's what you want to do is build up your subcontractor list and build those relationships what I've done is that uh, um, I like using a model to where I have my my primary uh, subcontractors and I have secondary subcontractors. So when I'm developing my, my service area, um, what I'm doing is my primary subcontractors are the ones that are my go-to subcontractors. You know, we've, uh, we've, ha we've got a relationship, they do great work, uh, and uh, you know, everything's working and just clicking and just really great. Our secondary uh, subcontractors are you know companies that uh, we haven't uh, maybe we haven't done business with or uh, we have done done very little business with, but uh, you know maybe they're more on the outer rim of your service area. Uh, that is what I consider secondary uh, contractors. Um, so whenever I take on a new account, what I'll do is I'll contact uh, my list of my primary subcontractors in that service area to see if they're interested in this. Uh, generally what I'll do is I already have a price in mind that uh, that I'll offer them and it's going to be a fair price you know I want it to be a win-win uh, situation you know I want us both to make money at this um, you know and after all you know you have to remember all I'm doing is I'm managing the account I'm not out there doing the, fulfilling the work that's what the contractors doing but anyway um, that's what I'll do is I'll contact that primary uh, sub in that area that service area offer them the position if they don't want it then I'll go down and keep going down my list um, you know it's my next uh, primary sub and so on and so forth if if all my uh, primary subs are busy or can't take on the job then I'll have to go to my my secondary uh, uh, contractor list and uh, so that's what that's what I have done uh, and that works out very well again you know uh, it's all about building relationships um, one thing I found out over the years is that uh, you can build your business uh, much easier with the help of others rather than just doing it yourself. That's why, uh, you know, don't be so closed-minded that you think that all your competition is your competition. It's not the case. You know, you can actually develop some great business relationships and partnerships with, the, with your uh, other cleaning companies in your area. Uh, one thing that you might also think about doing is, uh, uh, as far as hiring subs, let's say you're, uh, you know, you're cleaning facilities and um, you uh, are offering or expanding into, you know, lawn care or something like that. It's a service that you don't perform yourself, but you're using a subcontractor that performs that service and does it very well. I've done that in the past. Uh, you know, I've done that with uh, uh, pressure washers, window washers, you know. And people that, uh, cleaning companies that, you know, have that specific specialty niche, you know, so I'll partner up with them and we'll go in and we'll take on large facilities. And obviously when I hire a subcontractor or set up my primary and uh, secondary contra subcontractors, 
I'm going to have non-competes, non-disclosure agreements in place. You know, we're going to have contracts in place. So it's very well defined, you know, uh, as to, you know, uh, what, what, the, uh, what the agreement's all about, what they're getting paid, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, the other thing that I do is that, uh, you know, you can't train any of your uh, subcontractors uh, and so on and so forth. And, but, you know, what we did is that we always did their, our quality control, just like we would if we had an employee-filled build, uh, building. We'd go through and do our quality control inspections. And if there was any issues, you know, we would address it with the contractor. And again, you know, they'd have so much time to resolve the issue or, you know, or we'd have to take action. But um, anyway, that, what you'll find is if, if you have a system in place, it will, it will work out so much better. Uh, and again, it's all going to start about start from having uh, and making sure that you hire legal subcontractors. You just don't want to go into in, and open up that can of worms as to where it's questionable if that uh, if that contractor is actually a, a subcontractor or if they're an employee. Um, you know, I've done many videos on that subject. But uh, if you were to uh, you know put that system together and uh, you know and just abide by it, I think you'll do pretty well. I know plenty of companies that are doing very, very well uh, using a subcontractor model. I know others also that are using both. They got employees and subcontractors that are doing very, very well. You know, doing multiple, multiple millions of dollars in business. So, but anyway, those are some of the things that you want to think about if you're going to uh, start using subcontractors to, uh, to uh, fulfill your cleaning duties in your accounts. Uh, this is Steve Hansen. Hopefully, you're following this helpful. Thank you.